welcome to Top Table with me, Nick Church. Um, when we think about wedding suppliers, we often don't always think about celebrants um, at the top of the list. However, I think that celebrants have got um, more input into the way that a day feels, the emotion and the, the spirit of a day than almost any other supplier. My style of photography is really unique for couples and I think that's why personally I really like weddings with celebrants because they offer a similar ability to be able to personalise that ceremony. Um, so I'm really pleased to uh, be joined by independent celebrant Carol Smith. Hi Nick. And how are you? So how are things going? Well it's been a bit of a year this year unfortunately. Um, on the wedding side of things all my couples have postponed right. um, moving. Sometimes they've postponed once, twice and now maybe the third time. What I really like about my couples is that they haven't opted for anything different different to what they originally want if you can separate the legal aspect of the wedding to the wedding day and the ceremony many couples have said actually we've done that little legal bit so we can have our wedding mm. day when we want it well that's so, what yeah and, you, and you're a key part of what they want and, they, yeah. and they've chosen you for that reason as well the last the last time that, that we worked together was in as i said in may <laughs> The ceremony was so emotional. They they had um, I'll try and paint a picture about it, but that they they both have children from previous um, marriages or relationships, and they brought those children in and they did various with the ch to the children about how they were one one unit. And yeah. Carol led that just beautifully, and it was there was not a dry eye. No. In that. I'm fully I can feel myself getting emotional yeah. now talking about it. Normally, I'm so focused on my getting it right my timing you know get you know having the people saying the right thing putting them in the right place supporting them mm -hmm. and focused on doing the best that i can the emotion is probably the the high i get afterwards and yeah. it's gone well and mm. their wedding wasn't just the joining of carl and laura but the joining of two families right. And they integrated them. Um, and what was really nice, I, can't, I don't know if you remember, is at the end they did a first kiss, last kiss, mm -hmm. and they called their mums up. I remember, yeah. Which was a huge surprise. And they're always really nice, because normally the mums have got hats on like this, and the groom's really tall, and they've got to go in. But there was a, there was a lot of beauty in that ceremony, and there wasn't a dry eye. With the magic of post-processing, I'll, I'll put some images up now as I was snapping away yeah. from all of that. actually a lot of humour in that wedding as well because um, they didn't want anyone to take any photos because they wanted the evening guests not to have seen anything on social media right. at all and when Laura, um, Laura got married she was t taking Carl's surname which was Dix, D-I-X, right. okay and it's the one thing that you have to do as a celebrant that often gets people's backs up yeah. when you say to the guests put your phones away make sure they're on silent don't take any pictures and I just said, she's a dix. <laughs> and the place was an uproar. What are the, the main differences but for, for people that don't know, for a, a celebrant compared with a, using a registrar? I think the registrar, they're employed by the local authority. Mm -hmm. They might do three or four weddings in that day, so you've got your slot and then they go off. You might not have met them before they arrive um, for your service. You won't have built up maybe six months of talking, Zooming, yeah. um, ideas back and forth. Um, and the celebrant, with the registrar, you have to have your wedding in a specific place that is licensed for the service. Mm -hmm. A celebrant gives you the freedom to have the day exactly as you want it. We can't do the legal part, which the registrar can, but you can have the legal part either before or after your ceremony at a time convenient to you, um, and then just enjoy your, your day. Is that then the, the, the main disadvantage? That, that, why doesn't everyone choose a celebrant? I mean, that's the only yeah. thing, isn't it? For some couples, they, they say it's really important that our guests see the legal part being done during our marriage. Right. Um, but saying that, I have other couples that say we need people to think that it is the legal part in this marriage. And I say, well, I can't 
say those words because I'm not, but we can have um, a parchment signing. Sure. We can keep it as formal. We don't need hand fastings or broom jumpings. If you want a structured, traditional wedding ceremony, that's what you will mm. have. Broom so. jumping. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come on to these. I'm gonna. I've made a mental note of that because I'm gonna come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> photos that I've seen on your website of places where you you were with the couple being yeah. getting them married and yeah I mean you can't compete with like no. going to a forest or something and I'd be interested if if any registrars are watching this I would be interested to get registrar and to talk mm. about you know that there from their point of view as well I won't get them in now because we don't want a fight club <laughs> situation we're not allowed to be in the same room <laughs> no. at a wedding um, <laughs> Right, so you talked about you talked there about ring warming and broom jumping, which I, I've not come across that way. Can you talk through those those sorts of traditions and where they come from? Some couples choose, um, like Laura and Carl had a ring warming, and that mm. was lovely. Um, and that was while we're waiting and waiting and waiting for the bride. Um, Zach, their son, had the rings, and he really carefully. Um, help move them up and down through the guests and they held them and they gave them the best wishes for their wedding uh, for their marriage their future years together and then um so when they exchanged rings it wasn't just with their own love but the support of all the people mm. that they loved most in the world yeah you know just adds you know a huge dimension jumping the broom they didn't have anything to they couldn't afford a wedding but that was a significant thing from the old to the new mm -hmm. or cleaning the hearth um hand fastings there's so many different ways they can represent particular um characteristics or ideologies or what um what you want to base your marriage on like laughter friendship mm -hmm. they can you could say your vows as each one's done. Right. And then you tie the knot and it's sort of wee ha. And yeah. um, people um, that are having a blended family, maybe two families are joining together um, or um, want to remember people could do a unity candle where they light all the candle together. So one big light burns brighter than all the individuals. Right, okay. Sand ceremony where people have their own colours, lovely for children. Mm -hmm. Once the sand's been tipped in, you can't un unpick it oh, again. Oh, I see. And it oh, makes it stunning. When, when you do these, um, add, add these bits, you want them to be a surprise because you want to delight, entertain, astound your guests. You want it to be memorable. Okay. So you can bring in all your cultural um, heritage to celebrate it in this new union. Right. They're amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Right. So um, I've done... Um, funerals this year um, I've had couples that I've done this the wedding for they said as soon as this is over you'll do our baby naming mm. and they just said we want someone that stays on our journey all the way through right so you are almost like a part of this person this couple this family's mm. life through a lot of you know the, the things that milestones yeah. maybe um have you got advice for couples that might be watching this on um how they can approach their planning for their wedding Yes, I mean, I think what couples that are, you know, going to start planning need to know is that yet next year it's going to be extremely busy. Right. Because we've got all of last year's and this year's. So if you really have an idea of your photographer, your videographer, there's a venue that you want, I would suggest that you contact them be, um, and see if you can get it booked. But you need to have the COVID discussion in the event of it not happening what can you offer? What will we lose? What do we have to pay right. up front? But, I, you know, you need to start planning because um, there won't be a lot of cake makers around. There won't, the florists will be busy. It's going to be a very busy year. So plan ahead, but plan sensibly. You know, these are unprecedented times. That's right, yeah. yeah. I'm quite looking forward to getting back to precedented <laughs> times. That would be quite... <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Um, brilliant, okay. Um, right, so I'm a member of a few Facebook groups um, where we chat to brides, there's lots of suppliers there. Let them know you're coming on here um, and see if anyone had any questions. Um, so are you happy if I just put these to you? Yes. Right, so I haven't read through these properly yet, so bear with me. Um, right, Claire, Claire says, we have limited numbers due to COVID, COVID-19. 
um, and would, uh, as opposed to any other COVID, COVID-19, and would really like our family friend to marry us, is this possible? What are the steps? Right. So she's asking, is there, could, could a family friend do the ceremony part? Yes, it is possible. If you've got somebody that's a confident speaker, that's used to public speaking, I actually run a service where I can write it for you and then one of your family will deliver it. Okay. And I can run through the timings and look at how the, you know, bridesmaids or um, page boys are going to come up, the, the entrance, so that's no problem. But I've often worked um, and I've heard the photographers say, you can tell the difference between a highly trained celebrant and a family friend. Mm. So there is a difference. Yeah, so I guess there's a trade-off in the public speaking aspect and yeah. uh, and the way to direct you just the experience of having done so many, yeah. weighing up against if it's somebody that's just really special that you would want to have. Adam says, um, thanks Adam for this question. So Adam says, my partner wants a wedding in a church, he wants a church wedding that she, that she grew up in, in the village. Um, I'm not religious, and he says, at all, in capital letters. Um, any advice? Um, what, so was couples counselling something you've, you've, you've ever considered, Carol? Um, so any advice to the, the, those as a couple, if you've got two people that want quite a different um, type of ceremony? Um, I've done lots of weddings, like I think Babington House, they've got like a little church, and the couple have had the church wedding the day before, very small and intimate. I think St Audrey's have got a church. A lot of these big venues do have a church what on a the ground right. that you can use them, mm -hmm. and then have your um, ceremony the way that you want it, without the, the religious content, um, either later on that day or the following day. I mean, I like weddings that roll over a couple, for a couple of days. I really like Wedfest weddings where, yeah. you know, it is an important day and it is an expensive day. So the longer you can sort of enjoy it... I'm all for that. I reckon make a weekend out of it if you're going yeah. to get everybody in one yeah. place. and they can camp, can't they? Yeah. But what I would say, was it Adam? Adam, yeah. The sooner you learn to shut up and put up... The longer your um... no, that's that's your advice, right? There. <laughs> From experience, no, yeah. no. no. Fi find the venue that will cater for that because they are around. Um, good advice for you, Adam. Um, and then finally, we've got Amy who just asks um, randomly. Thanks, Amy. Um, how, what was your wedding like? Well, that's cheeky, Amy. Um, which one? Probably can't remember either of them very well. I'm a celebrant, not a saint. <laughs> right. That's your um, website. That's your website strapline. That's that's that sort of thing. Um, have you got any um, offers or details that you'd like to give out to out to couples? Um, I don't do special offers because I think I keep my prices quite low mm -hmm. because I like to offer. Uh, you know, people that are in their twenties or thirties getting married or even older don't have all the money in the world they might want to buy a house or they might already have children so I like to keep my prices low so everyone can enjoy them and I okay. like what I do mm -hmm. um, so I don't really offer anything different on my website it's all quite transparent um, what things will be but sometimes like if there's the ring warming um, or the first kiss last kiss like those two things you know you can have those as a little gift from me but it's not oh, that's a nice idea yeah so I'll, I'll always bring the vows wrapped matching in the ribbon and i'll make i make all the elements so if you have the hand fasting i'll get the bag and i'll embroider it so i do do little gifts but they're all different for that couple well, that's been fascinating carol thanks for joining us today and i'm sure any couples out there have got loads of stuff they've learned about celebrancy so if you are planning your wedding and you've not considered a celebrant then hopefully that's been really useful for you and um, give Carol a call and um, see what she might be able to offer to your wedding. Um, yeah so thanks very much again and look forward to catching up soon hopefully we'll do a wedding together next yes. year when weddings are actually a thing again properly. Um, yeah and thanks again. Thank you Nick thank you for inviting me. It's that's a pleasure. Good. Thank you.